God. And most of them, seriously, if they go back and find their roots and things like that, they were spat on at one time, you know. The Irish are as white as the moon. Look how the British, 800 years of, of Anglo-Saxon persecution, the Welsh as white as the moon, Irish slavery, just read the history about Irish slavery. They had slaves, they took Irish as slaves. The Ottomans sent all this wheat during the potato famine, right, where all these millions of Irish were starving. The Ottomans, Sultan Abdul Majid sent wheat and uh, to help the Irish because you know they heard about it, so he sent ships. The, the British, the Anglo-Saxon, the British government wouldn't allow the wheat through because they didn't want to make the English government look bad because the Turks were helping and they weren't. They let the Irish die. I mean, all you have to do is read if you want a good uh, Anglo-Irish take on on the English attitude towards the Irish. Read Jonathan Swift's A Modest Proposal. Right? It's a great essay. And, you know, it's tongue in cheek, but he was basically articulating the sentiment of those people. Let's just bake their kids, bake them, you know, make them into food. Right? So that's what happened. I mean, that's, you know, my, my ancestors fled Catholic persecution in Scotland and they, and they fled uh, English persecution in Ireland to, to America. And, the Irish, and then they got to America. My great grandfather got to, uh, to Philadelphia, and he, he met the Irish riots. They went and burnt down all their churches, and the Protestants, because they're from Anglo-Saxon. So the Irish, there's a book you can read, When the Irish Became White, which is about how the Irish got integrated into American society, because first they were treated like uh, African Americans or Native Americans. That's why so many Blacks have Irish blood. Imam Zaid's half Irish, right? Because Irish couldn't marry uh, Anglo-Saxon women in America. Right? So there's sick people, just racist people that have these diseases. Racism is a sickness, you know? And, and it's more tribalism because the color is not so much the issue. Trust me, Turks are Turks. And many Turks are as white as the uh, Lai. Lai? Did I say that right? No, I. How do you say moon? I? I. Yeah. How do you say white? White. Bial? Bial? Yeah, the Bial. The Arabs must have got it from Turkish. Bealzai. <laughs> huh? Turks are white as the moon, but they're still Turks as far as the Europeans are concerned. They're Asiatic. So it's not about color. We have to get out of this whole color thing. This is about tribe and socioeconomic. It's about money, and it's about this idea of blood purity, which is a disease. Some of the Arabs have that disease. Well, why? It's a disease in our community. Uh, some uh, uh, South Asians have that disease. They think that, uh, you know, Belushis are below them, right? They think that Patans are below them, right? And then you go to India and you'll find that you've got people from different parts of India. I mean, they look down on people from Kerala. Kerala, sweetest people in India. Really? Malayalam. They speak Malayalam. Arabs say Malayalam. <laughs> Kerala, nice people. Wallahi, so I lived in the Emirates. All the Kerala people that were there, a lot of people from Kerala, they were the sweetest people. I was amazed at the Kerala people. They're just really humble people. I find Bang Bengalis very humble people. Wallahi, people from Bangladesh, they're very humble people. 500 years ago, Bangladesh had the highest, it had one of the highest per capita incomes in the world. 